Okay, well, it is 9 a.m. and we want to be very respectful of everybody's time. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody to our first, hopefully the first of many uh, convenings of the Missouri Participating Institutions in the State Authorization Reciprocity Agreement. I'm Dr. Laura Biedenkopf. I'm the Director of Academic Affairs in the Office of Post-Secondary Policy. Um, I was previously the state portal agent and those duties have been turned over to Alicia Erickson and she'll introduce herself here in just a bit. I've been with the department for almost 20 years. Ah, yes, almost 20 years. Um, and I've been with the uh, Sarah portal entity side for probably about well since inception for Missouri. So that was since 2015 or so. Um, I work with uh, several individuals in our office. I believe Stephen Deo is here. Stephen, are you here this morning? Maybe, maybe not. Um, he is with our proprietary school certification program, but he is going to be joining us as we do have some certified schools here. But uh, welcome everybody. I'm going to give. Uh, Alicia, a little bit of time to introduce herself and her experience with Sarah, and then we'll do a little bit of housekeeping before we introduce our first guest, Alicia. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for attending this meeting. My name is Alicia Erickson. I am a senior research analyst in the um, academic affairs division of the Office of Post Secondary Policy in Missouri Department of Higher Education and Workforce Development. I have as Laura mentioned, newly taken on Sarah uh, duty. So I'm still very much on a learning curve and we'll be learning along uh, and discussing along with all of you today. But I just wanted to, um, I, I recognize many of these names um, from working on Sarah applications and answering Sarah questions. So I hope you will feel free to reach out to me if I can ever be of assistance or help you find uh, information or solve a problem with your Sarah um, uh, membership at, with the state. So. Um, looking forward to today and um, thank you. And I think I'll pass it back to Laura for a little bit of housekeeping duties. Yes, just a little bit. I know that WebEx is new to some of you. So uh, what we would like you to do is if you would keep yourself on mute on the lower left-hand part of your screen, I believe there should be a mute button. Uh, and then if you have questions during the presentations, please, you can, like raise your hand with the little uh, little buttons down there, or you can just unmute yourself and say, I have a question. Or best option is to put your questions in the chat and then we can kind of refer those to the speakers um, at the end of their presentations. Uh, if we do get too much background noise, um, Alicia, she will go ahead and kind of mute everybody. It just really, helps us all to be able to hear the speakers and when people ask questions to, to hear those questions and the answers as well. We are live and I believe you're recording right now. Is that correct, Alicia? Um, we will record each we session. We are recording. Thank you. We will record each session individually and then post that on the department's website for Sarah. So that way, if, oh, if somebody says something, I can't remember exactly what it was, you can always go back and find that particular section of, of the session. We will uh, have several guests today and um, see, Alicia has on there, use chat to introduce yourself and tell us where you're from. If maybe you're not the, uh, uh, the, the primary portal, not the primary portal, the primary contact at your institution, or if this is your first time, uh, with your first introduction to Sarah, you know, go ahead and let us know. We have a lot of very experienced individuals. I see a lot of names that I recognize, as Alicia said. So uh, we have a, a wealth and depth of knowledge of Sarah here in Missouri. Uh, okay, uh, Alicia or Stephen, anything else before we get ready? I am monitoring with uh, Marianne from NC Sarah. She was having a little bit of difficulty joining, but uh, she, she should be with us in time for her session. But I think we'll go ahead and get going. Um, so our first speaker today is, let me pull up. 
Uh, it's Ms. Emily Jacobson. Emily is the Associate Director of the Midwestern Regional State Authorization Reciprocity Agreement, uh, M. Sara. She assists with the development, implementation, management, and oversight of M. Sara, which enables states in the MEC region, which is Missouri, to enter into the Voluntary Reciprocity Agreement for the purpose of authorizing institutions to provide online and other distance-based courses and programs to students living in other states. So Emily comes to the compact from the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. Did you play La Crosse or was that just the name of the city? That would be awesome. That was the name of the city. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you out there La Crosse, yeah. Uh, she was the university undergraduate research coordinator and while at UWL, Emily worked to increase awareness of undergraduate research on campus uh, at the Mayo Clinic Health System, Franciscan Care in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Emily earned her bachelor's in communication studies from Winona State University and she joined the compact in January 2014. And just from personal experience, Emily is just one of the nicest people and is always there and ready to help answer any questions. So. Um, I will turn it over then to Emily to tell us about M. Sarah. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for being patient with me, everyone. Um, so Laura mentioned, I'm Emily. I'm our associate director for M. Sarah. Uh, I work for Midwestern Higher Education Compact, one of the four higher education compacts. Uh, we're based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm joined today by Leah, um, who doesn't love introductions. Uh, Leah is our policy and research manager at MEC um, and has been with us since December of 2020, I believe. 50% um, of Leah's position functions are dedicated to M. Sarah. Um, so if you reach out to us at the compact, you might receive a response from either one of us. Um, so today I'll share a little bit with you about uh, the regional compact, uh, what we are uh, and M. Sarah. Uh, a little bit about how we operate at the compact with our staffing, um, share with you what our regional steering committee is um, and how that operates a little bit and a little bit about the role of the Sarah State Portal entities as well. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with kind of the structure of Sarah and what the regional education compacts are, I wanted to share a bit about that with you. Um, and I think that'll be helpful to kind of lay the foundation as you go through your day and hear a bit about the other presentations too. Um, so shaded in the yellow area, um, you can see MEX uh, portion of the country, uh, Midwestern Higher Education Compact. Um, we have 12 states that are members of our compact. Um, in the other areas, you see other acronyms floating around. Um, the left is the, you see red states for WICHE, which is the Western Interstate Commission for Higher Education or the Western Compact. Uh, you see SREB uh, in the green, which is the Southern Regional Education Board. And then up in the Northeast, we have NEBI. Uh, that's the New England Higher Education Board. Um, so there are four educational compacts in the country, as I mentioned. Everyone has a little bit different niche. Um, so a few of the compacts have more of a higher education focus. Uh, SREB in the South looks at K through 12 a little bit more. Um, in MEC, uh, we have a variety of programs and services that we offer to our member states. Um, some of those could be uh, student health insurance. Uh, we have a military credit initiative program. Um, yeah. We have in, we have contracts with different technology vendors for the member the states and institutions. Um, so things like. Um, Contracts so like with Dell, uh, like Xerox the for printing, the um, IBM. Um, Alicia, can you hear me? Okay, I'm getting a little yeah. feedback. Good. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so one of the things we do at MEC uh, is uh, the work with um, SARA um, or the Midwestern State Authorization Reciprocity Agreement. Um, each compact administers SARA through their regional yeah. comp. Right. I just want to make sure contracts. I wasn't missing something. And then or... it's overseen um, by a coordinating body in which is based in Boulder, Colorado, and that's NC SARA, the National Council for State Authorization Reciprocity Agreements. Um, and I think you'll be hearing from uh, Marianne and Jean 
Sweeney uh, shortly after me this morning as well. Um, so I started with the compact back um, in January of 2015 um, to help get Sarah up and running in the Midwest. Um, we didn't have any Sarah member states at that point or any Sarah institutions. Um, so Missouri is one of the places that I uh, came to with my uh, colleague and supervisor, Jenny Parks. Um, and we held a workshop much like this on the ground in Missouri to talk about the differences between Sarah state authorization uh, testified in the legislature because legislation was needed um, in Missouri for you all to become a Sarah member state. Um, so that's a little bit about the background and the structure. Um, hopefully helps you understand um, kind of how this Sarah web comes together nationwide. And then there's this coordinating body at the national level, um, which is the national council. Um, a couple things I wanted to point out on this map before I click to the next slide. Um, you'll see uh, North Dakota and South Dakota are kind of ready orange because there's hash lines through them. Uh, North Dakota and South Dakota belong to both MEC and Wichi. So our compact and then the Western compact. Um, that's the only two states uh, in the country that are like that. Um, I'm honestly not sure how that came to be, um, but they're still members of both compacts. Um, over on the East Coast, you see a handful of states that are shaded and in gray. Um, those states have not been members of compacts historically. Um, and if you look at the Sarah policy manual, the unified agreement uh, for Sarah, um, states can be members of Sarah if they aren't a member of a regional compact, but to do that, they have to affiliate with a compact in order to become a Sarah member state. Um, which all of those states have done to date and are Sarah members. Uh, this is a list of our um, Sarah member states. Um, you'll notice that we have 12 MAC states, but there are only 11 listed here. Um, that's because of those uh, orange looking states that were kind of crossed hashed crosshatch, North Dakota and South Dakota. Uh, North Dakota uh, came with MEC for Sarah purposes. They were the second state to join the agreement. Um, and then South Dakota went with Wichi for Sarah purposes. So those two states um, just kind of separated. Um, we, we got we got one child and then Wichi got the other child <laughs> um, in the agreement. So listing of our states there. Um, I'm not going to read all of these to you, uh, partly because of time, but partly because um, you can take a peek at the slides while I'm talking and possibly after if those are shared out. But this is just a little bit about our role in Sarah at the compact level. Um, there are other things that aren't on this list because they're lengthy, um, but one of our primary purposes is to review, approve, or reject states from membership. Um, hopefully we never have to remove a state, but that is something that we're charged with doing if need be. Um, we did reject uh, one state's initial application when they were joining the agreement. Um, they had to go back and make some changes before we were able to let them in and before they met the criteria listed in the Sarah policy manual. Um, we're responsible for oversight, implementation, and execution of SARA in our region. Uh, we're charged with constituting and operating a regional steering committee. I'll talk to you a little bit more about that on one of my next slides. Um, we work very closely with our SARA state portal entities. Um, so if they have questions, they can come to us. We meet frequently with them, um, respond to inquiries, and work with institutions where we need to um, on the state's behalf. Um, one of the things I enjoy most about the compact and uh, my role here is that we're really, uh, I see us as a sounding board and a liaison. Um, we work very closely with our states and our steering committee members, with the folks at NC SARA. Um, there are counterparts at regional compacts that do the work that Leah and I do, so we're in close contact with them. Um, we really help vet a lot of issues and a question. Um, sometimes we work cross regionally, so if something comes up for one of our states in the Midwest and we need to connect to them with a state in the Southern region um, and or work with NC Sarah on that. There's really a lot of collaboration um, and kind of figuring out how this reciprocity uh, web works. Um, I'll skip to the next slide. A little bit about our role as compact staff more specifically versus the compact overall. Um, we're the primary point of contact for our MSARA state portal agents. So uh, just much as you all at the institutional level would typically reach out to your state portal agents in Missouri first, Alicia or Laura. 
um, they reach out to us typically before they would go to NC Sarah with an issue. So you can kind of start to see where the layers are. Um, and some of that depends on the question, right? Um, so I'll just pick uh, NC Sarah is responsible for institutional payments um, and kind of navigating that process via Salesforce. They send out the renewals, et cetera. Um, so typically, if there's a question like that, it will go, you know, either directly to NC Sarah or will be looped in at the regional compact level on that. Um, there are questions um, and state matters that are more regionally focused. So I'll say the state applications, how all of you at the institutional level re renew with your state for SARA purposes or apply initially. All of the states work with us directly at the compacts to apply for and or renew their SARA uh, membership in the agreement. Um, at the compact level, we I work a lot with facilitating communications I mentioned between the different stakeholder groups. Um, we plan quite a few convenings, uh, so whether those are quarterly meetings for stakeholders in our region, um, we have a big annual meeting um, that's three days long. That's for our state portal agents and our regional steering committee members. Um, we often bring in guest speakers to that from other organizations. Um, NC Sarah will come and meet with our folks and present. Um, we do a lot of communications work too. Um, so within our region, uh, we send an M Sarah update or a newsletter. Um, later in this presentation, I'll have a link so that if all of you want to sign up for that update, you can get it. Um, we typically send those updates on a bi monthly to monthly basis. Um, I'd encourage you to check out the NC Sarah website as well because they send NC Sarah updates or newsletters that you might want to be looped in on also. Um, last thing I'll mention on the slide is that uh, we work in partnership uh, with NC Sarah and our counterparts on a variety of matters. Um, some of those, if you take a peek at the unified agreement or Sarah policy, you can see some of those roles outlined in the ways in which we might work with one another. Um, and then I mentioned when I introduced myself, I work uh, full time as associate director for M Sarah. Um, I, I, we have some dual roles too that we play. So um, I'll serve. I serve on currently NC Sarah State Portal Entity Advisory Committee. Um, our Compact President um, at MAC also has a seat on the NC Sarah Board, as do other Compact Presidents, and she also serves on that Board's Finance Committee. She served on the Executive Committee. Um, so that just are a couple examples so you can kind of see the ways in which kind of we interweave and work with each other collectively. I'll touch briefly on our M Sarah Regional Steering Committee. Uh, I mentioned earlier that as a compact, we're charged with having one of these to be uh, involved with Sarah. Um, so every every uh, region has a steering committee. So there's a Southern uh, Regional Steering Committee, one in Nebi, um, and one in Wichita, the Western Compact as well. Um, our steering committee within M Sarah has 16 members. Um, we have state seats and at large seats. Uh, so the state seats are um, when you have a member state in your region, you have to have a representative from that state serve on your steering committee. So in Missouri, that's Laura. Uh, Laura is our state representative on our regional steering committee. Um, and those seats are selected by our MAC commissioners or members of our board, um, of which we have uh, four or five typically in each state at any given time. They appoint those seats within their own state. Uh, there are also at large seats, which are selected by our MAC president. Um, those she typically does in consultation with folks in our region to see if they have any names to recommend and bring forward. Uh, we have a chair and a vice chair of our regional steering committee. Uh, I mentioned that uh, because in our region, those roles are balanced. Um, and what I mean by that is that our chair is a state portal agent. Um, she's a state regulator, so she's got a state voice. Our vice chair is from Indiana University um, and works at an institution. Um, so in our region, we have uh, state representatives, institutional representatives, system reps. Um, we had someone from the Missouri Board of Nursing at one point, B.B. Schultz. Um, so we had a professional licensure representative at one point, um, and no matter what within our region, um, folks mm -hmm. on our steering committee really want to see those roles balanced out so that stakeholder voices are represented. Sarah state portal entities. Um, we have 11 um, Sarah member states. Uh, so we have 11 uh, state portal entities and I wrote 11 plus. 
Um, <laughs> because it, although you have one entity in a state responsible for oversight, you might have multiple individuals within that entity. Um, so, um, in Missouri, your primary point of contact is going to be Alicia, but you may hear from Laura. There may be times you'd hear from Leroy Wade. Um, I'm not sure how much he's involved um, with Sarah at this point any longer. Um, states like Wisconsin, um, there's a different state portal agent for each institutional sector. Um, so they have four state portal agents within their entity that do the SARA work, one for the public institutions, private, and so on. Um, again, I'm not gonna read through uh, this list. Um, it's not exhaustive. Um, it's some of the things that state portal, state portal entities work on within SARA. Um, if institutions have questions, they can go to state portal entities um, to submit their institutional applications, whether initial or renewal, those go to state portal entities for review. Um, if there are institutions that are out of compliance or they're receiving complaints, um, those would be handled at the state portal entity level as well. Um, and you all hear more about this, I think, throughout the day based on the agenda I saw. Uh, this is a listing of our Missouri representation within them, Sarah. Uh, Laura Vedenhaupt serves on our steering committee. Uh, Alicia is your state portal agent um, with support from Laura and Leroy. Uh, Leroy Wade, uh, Brandy Elliott um, from Missouri Online became a member of our regional steering committee um, this past spring. Um, and then Leroy also, I wanted to point out, serves on the NC Sarah board as well um, from Missouri. Um, Laura and Brandy, so you'll see you have two steering committee representatives from Missouri right now. Laura's in the state seat, Brandy's in that at-large seat that I mentioned. Um, and again, you can kind of see that balance of a state representative and an institutional representative. Uh, we shift those seats from state to state because um, we only have five at-large seats. So just because there are two representatives from Missouri right now, um, it doesn't mean that in three years there will still be two. There might only be one, and then we'd rotate that seat to maybe Iowa or Michigan to give a state um, a chance at having two representatives on the committee. Uh, here's my contact information, uh, Leah's contact information as well. Um, there's a link here where you can subscribe to the MSARA updates or the newsletters that I mentioned, um, and then links to our MSARA email account if you ever have questions for us and uh, both NC Sarah's and MSARA's websites. And I think I'll push pause and hand it over to questions and let Laura and Alicia do what they need to. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Emily and Leah for being here with us today. Um, feel free if you have any questions or comments, you can put them in the chat or we have just a few minutes before our next session starts and you can just raise your hand and ask a question away. I do want to kind of tease the after lunch uh, session where Alicia and I will be talking about the Sarah application, we have an exciting thing to share with you all. And that is courtesy of a grant that we received from and Sarah. So thank you guys so much. We enjoyed using the money <laughs> and I uh, really think the institutions are going to enjoy how we use the money. So that is greatly appreciated. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Emily or Leah or Anything about M Hex role, M Sarah's role in this process? 